one of the most common questions I'm asked in my work with the bereaved is, how do I do this? How do I grieve? What is grief work? So grief is the one thing that we will all have in common. Knowing how to do grief work is still very challenging. We have many adaptations to avoid grief. We have distractions, we have denial, we have pretending, we have lying to ourselves, we have intellectual approaches, we have task-oriented activities. Many of us avoid the emotions of grief doing whatever it takes to just get back to feeling normal. The challenge here though is that all of these lead us to believe that we are doing our grief work but really none of these are the work of grief, they are the tasks of grief. So watch this video today to learn one way to approach your grief. My name is Joe McRogers and welcome to our Grievolution community where our goal is to do grief differently. Please subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications bell so that you'll know each time that we post a new discussion, a new tool or an exploration being offered from my experience of being a grief therapist. When someone asks me, how do I do this? My answer is always the same. You need to work through the distractions, the diversions, the busy tasks of grief, and then purposefully enter into a relationship with your grief. You see, here's the part that most people don't know about. There is your loss, and then there is your grief. Your loss captures the presence of their absence in your life. Your grief captures the absence of their presence in your life. It's complicated, I know, so I'll try and say it more clearly. Loss equals missing them in your life. It's about them. Grief work equals addressing your life without them. Grief work is about you. So how to accomplish this? Often people will tell me that they need a map. Grief work can be so overwhelming emotionally that it can always benefit from some structure. A particularly helpful model is Warden's Four Tasks. William Warden has been a pioneer in bereavement work and he developed this model in 1991. These tasks are number one, to accept the reality of the loss, number two, to experience the pain of the grief, number three, to adjust to an environment without your loved one, and number four, to withdraw emotional energy from the grief and to reinvest it into another relationship with yourself or other. This model is commonly referred to as the TEAR model, T-E-A-R. T to accept the reality, E experience the emotions, A adjust to living without the person, and R reinvest into a living relationship with life and yourself. So first, T to accept the reality of the loss. Accepting the reality of the loss both intellectually and emotionally can come pretty instantaneously to some people, but for most it's going to take some time. Telling one's story of loss in a safe environment, such as in therapy, letting oneself think about, talk about, and process what has happened can help. Sometimes we have to repeat it over and over and over again to ourselves or to others in order to begin to accept the reality that they're really gone. Sometimes this becomes difficult for those around you to hear because they've already accepted it. So it is important to find a supportive, safe place for these exposures to acceptance. Number two, E, experience the pain of grief. Oh, the next step of letting ourselves feel these emotions of grief is what really activates our acceptance of what we have lost. If all of our energy is going into not feeling the feelings, holding them at bay, then we are essentially only protracting the length of the emotional crisis. This can be the hardest and the scariest 
task for most people. We fear letting the dam break and never being able to stop crying or stop the emotions running all over us. It is a reversal of the grief tide when we've put so much energy into holding it all together. These emotions now need to be experienced. They need to be named and owned and observed and processed. Again, a safe, supported manner and environment needs to be a part of this. This could take place in therapy. It could be group therapy. It could be peer counseling or groups. Journaling, art therapy, somatic therapy, movement therapy. It takes a willingness to explore what works for you. Number three, A, adjust to the environment in which the loved one is missing. Experiencing our emotions is key in helping us to adjust to the environment in which our loved person is no longer with us. Adjustment takes time and comes only as we continuously work through the grief emotions that arise. Eventually, with intentional actions and practice, we find that we can talk about our loved one and begin to fondly remember them. We fondly remember them as well as mourn them. It allows us to meet our grief with a bit of a counterbalance to the sadness. It allows us to feel more balanced rather than experiencing it just as a free fall. This can involve internal adjustments through questions such as, who am I now? and external adjustments such as finances or childcare, uh, daily living skills. One woman struggled with what it brought her when she who was going to replace the furnace filter. Spiritual adjustments are also often necessary. We might have had universal beliefs that we held that the world is fair and kind, and that belief may no longer be accessible to us. Beliefs, values, and assumptions can all be challenged when we are grieving. And number four are reinvest in relationships with yourself and others. Working on the three previous tasks brings one to the final goal, to be able to identify energy, love, and compassion, and to be able to reinvest those energies into new life routines and experiences and relationships with both ourselves and others. Well, moving on is an overused phrase in grief. I'm going to use it simply to contrast it to staying still. If we don't attend to the acute experiences of our grief, then they will leave heavy residue or filters that we risk living the rest of our life through. While you will need to always live with some of the impact of your loss because it is part of your lived experience, your lost experience, it's part of who you are now. And it is important enough to influence and change you. What you are trying to accomplish is finding a way to live with your loss, not because of your loss or in spite of your loss. Living with our loss allows us to eventually feel ready to invest in other current living relationships. This isn't a replacing of our loved one. It gives us the chance to cultivate a trust that life continues after and with loss. In my privileged role as a grief therapist, I have seen hundreds of examples of people doing their grief work and then having fulfilling, honoring futures. I've seen people learning to live alone to be happy being alone, to have other children or not and being at peace with those decisions. I've seen people learning to take on new emotional risks, learning new life skills and creating new unanticipated goals in their life. I know that this work is worth the effort. I trust that we are not meant to be tethered to our grief, but rather that our grief is meant to come along with us for the journey of our lives. This is a model, it's one model, and I'm really interested in your opinion. Have you been looking for a map how to do this? Do you think that this model could be of any help? Please put a comment below as a means of inspiring all of us as to how to step into our relationships with our grief. For any of you looking to have a way 
into the relationship with your grief, please consider the tier model. And while you're looking for your map, I send you kind thoughts, kind words, and a kind heart in your grief work. If this video has been helpful, please like it with the thumbs up and share it so that YouTube will know to largely recommend it to others who are searching for grief support. Take care and I'll see you next time.